We're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Mr. President, it's too much. And I'll say, no, it isn't. We have to keep winning. We have to win more. We're going to win more. We're going to win so much. Hello there and welcome to the GG Degree Aether Revolt pre-release guide. Now today we're going to go over all the commons and uncommons in the set that I think you should keep an eye out for. This will help you when you're deck building because you'll be able to see those cards pop up and you'll say, oh look, my green's really strong, oh look, my X is really strong, and that's great. We're not going over rares because rares, you guys, you only have a few of them in the pool and I trust you to evaluate those yourself. Now, after that, we're going to go over the cards in Kaladesh, which I think are much stronger now because you'll still have some packs of Kaladesh at your pre-release. So you're going to want to see those cards that have suddenly spiked because of the new cards that are in the set. The last thing that we're going to do is what I call stupid combos for stupid people, where we look at some all-in combos that you might be able to assemble yourself, but are a bit risky. Before we go into all the different colors of cards, I first wanted to go over one very quick thing, which are the implements in this set. Much like the puzzle knots of the previous set, these are very cheap artifacts that you can put down. When you sacrifice them, you get to draw a card and get a cheap effect. Now there are a lot of cards that synergize well with these, even though these are weak on their own. So when we come across those cards, I'm going to point out, hey, this works really well with implements. All right, so we're going to start off the review in white with Audacious Infiltrator, Restoration Specialist, and Felidar Guardian. Audacious Infiltrator is a decent attacker. Restoration Specialist is good early game to get those beats on, but it also has late game utility, which is what I love in early game creatures. Whereas Felidar Guardian helps you with a lot of the enter the battlefield effects that show up a ton in white and also in black. Our next three cards are Aeronaut Admiral, Airdrop Aeronauts, and Dawn Feather Eagle. Aeronaut Admiral is basically for dumb flying vehicles and also good on his own. Airdrop Aeronauts is great for races because while you're going in the air and beating them down, you're also gaining life when you cast this card, so make sure that you can win them. Dawn Feather Eagle allows you to basically go kapow. Really great with servos and in the decks that make them, Thopters. Our next card is Deadeye Harpooner, and this card looks like it's really hard to control when you're able to use it, and this is our first card that works very well with implements. When those implements leave the battlefield as you sacrifice them, then you can cast Deadeye Harpooner and get that guaranteed kill. Thopter Arrest, Caught in the Brights, and Decommission are our next cards. Thopter Arrest is just one of those great white removal spells that we've been seeing in this style in recent sets. Caught in the Brights is very similar, but worse because those creatures that you have put an aura on can still crew vehicles and use, you know, tap abilities and all that sort of thing, so they can still be annoying. Whereas Decommission is just one of those cards with so many artifacts in these sets, you can probably just slap one Decommission in any white deck. Lastly in white, we have Alley Evasion, which is just an ultra-cheap combat trick, which is the best kind, but it's also flexible in giving you more Enter the Battlefield triggers or making it so that your creatures dodge removal. Next, let's talk about blue. The first creatures I like to bring up are Skyship Plunderer, Aether Swooper, Windkind Raiders, and Shielded Aether Thief. Now, Skyship Plunderer can make energy or plus one, plus one counters, which is kind of cool. The Swooper leaves behind chump blockers in an air strategy, so while you're going in big, their big dumb creatures are having to deal with these stupid servos that you're leaving on the ground. Winkin Raiders is a big guy for cheap when you use those implements, all that kind of thing, in order to improvise for this. It's going to be a lot cheaper than it looks. And Shielded Aether Thief is also great in the blue skies because it allows you to stop little creatures from hitting you and getting that incidental damage and it allows you to draw cards as you get energy or block and get energy. Bastion Inventor, Dispersal Tactician, and Salvage Scuttler are next three cards. Now, Bastion Inventor is basically a big dumb creature, which is cheaper than it should be by the time you get around to casting it. Allows you to make those two creatures in one turn type play. Whereas Dispersal Tactician is kind of a little bit filler, but I like that it can pick off servos and thopters, all those tokens that might be annoying you, 
and it's great at slowing down vehicles. Salvage Scuttler is an amazing card, really incredible, but only if you have a lot of revolt creatures, which will allow you to actually turn that disadvantage into a huge advantage. Trophy Mage is our next card. It can get you stuff like Implement of Examination, Cogwork Assembler, and a lot of the rare artifacts in this set are three converted mana cost. Now for blue non-creature spells, we're going to start off with Negate and Metallic Rebuke. Now Negate, I'm always happy just running one of these in sealed. It's a bit of a slow format. You should be able to connect it with something good. And Metallic Rebuke is actively a good card. Once you've got one single artifact, such a little thing to ask, then it becomes a Mana Leak, which is a great card. And once you have two, it just becomes actually quite busted. So you can almost put in as many of these as you feel like you want to play. Next, we have Reverse Engineer and Illusionist Stratagem. Now, Reverse Engineer will be very cheap card draw by the time it's the last card in your hand and you're wanting to refill. And Illusionist Stratagem, you're going to want to have a lot of enter the battlefield effects for this one. Don't just throw it in every deck, but if you've got some ways to abuse this thing, just a few, you will abuse this thing and it's going to be great. Now our last card is Ice Over, which is just blue removal. It's fine. It's, it's worse than it's even been in some recent sets but you know, you work with what you've got. Now our truly last blue card is Efficient Construction, which is basically amazing. Um, if you go deep on the artifacts, you make sure that a lot of your creatures are artifacts, you put in some vehicles, you use some puzzle knots, you use some of just, it's Kaladesh, there's a lot of artifacts. You're gonna get a lot of just incidental thopters and those become extremely dangerous extremely quickly. So I would put this in any deck where I'm trying to do some artifact shenanigans and I happen to be in blue. The next color of course is black and we're gonna start off with Aether Poisoner. Gifted Aetherborn and Defiant Salvager. Now, Aether Poisoner is just annoying because of Death Touch. If you ever sit across a Death Touch creature, you're gonna find that annoying. Gives you some energy at the same time, that's great. Gifted Aetherborn is a very efficient for its mana cost creature, so you're gonna to wanna to play that. And Defiant Salvager, this sacrifice is gonna be great with implements because you're gonna sacrifice stuff to it and then you're gonna draw cards. That's gonna be great. Our next two cards are Foundry Hornet and Fen Hauler. Now, Foundry Hornet, I want to point out, is great with green, where there's a lot of plus one, plus one, and it can also work in any deck that can do a decent amount of Fabricate with the old Kaladesh cards. But the big thing here is that it is a slayer of servos. So if you ever have, I mean, your, your opponent's pretty much always going to have servos, but man, if you see that they have a lot, this thing, you can just completely blow them out. Now, Fen Hauler is basically one of these cheap big boys, again, with that Improvise. Ironclad Revolutionary, Sly Requisitioner, and Vengeful Rebel are our next three cards. Now these cards are all implements, implements, implements. Now Sly Requisitioner, I'll also throw in Puzzle Knots as a possibility, and Vengeful Re Rebel, I'll say Implements, Puzzle Knots, and White Flicker cards. If you can keep bouncing stuff, wow, that's going to be really great. So this, these are the black cards that are super high payoff for those like heavy artifact decks. On to non-creature cards in black, we've got Resourceful Return, which is really cheap way to get value, and it's easy to remit the requirement that will allow you to get two cards for the price of one, which is always what you want to be doing. Fatal Push, Cruel Finality, and Daring Demolition keep black as the removal king, of course, with Fatal Push being highly efficient. Cruel Finality gives you that value in Scry, and you can also use it as a combat trick type of thing if you like. And Daring Demolition is just completely unconditional. It kills the thing, which is really a good thing in Sealed. They put a bomb, you blow it up, no problem. Next, we're going to go through the color red, starting with Aether Chaser, and then Steamworks Brawler, and Enrage Giant. Now, Aether Chaser is just one of those efficient little beaters. I love that it's got first strike, you know? Sweatworks Brawler is actually cheaper than it looks. Even if you get that one mana discount with the Improvise, it's gonna really beat them to death. Same with Enraged Giant. That thing is really gonna come in there. Our next card is a common, but I just wanna give it its own little spot, which is Emerald Gear Smasher. Now, if you open like three of these, they are amazing with implements. Now, as you blow up implements with one of them, then it'll help you find the other one. 
So this is just going to accelerate you through your deck. It's going to be hurting your opponent the whole time. And you can also blow up servos to hit them. These are going to be very annoying. And if you put it in a deck that's even a little bit aggressive, these can easily get in, you know, eight damage at the end of the game. Next, we've got Reckless Racer, which is basically great. It's really deadly if you put it with combat tricks because it already comes with the first strike. So any combat trick is going to cause huge blowouts and it does rummaging on its own. Rummaging being throwing away a card and then grabbing one instead of looting being grabbing a card and then throwing one away. Now our next card definitely deserves its own little spot, which is Scrapper Champion. Now this card has Double Strike, which is always a very stupid ability. And the thing that's so great about this card is it's an uncommon that is a must answer. Your opponent must answer this card or else they will lose very, very quickly. And I love that in an uncommon, so I really like Scrapper Champion. In non-creature spells, we've got Chandra's Revolution, Hungry Flames, and Shock. Now, Chandra's Revolution is the weakest red removal, but it is still removal, so if you feel like you just need one or two more pieces of removal, these will fill in for you. Hungry Flames is actually great, it's at instant speed, and it hits their face at the same time. This is straight up amazing, whereas Shock, just put in as many of them as you open if you're playing red. It is very efficient and it's very flexible. For our last color, let's talk about green. I'd like to start off with Druid of the Cowl, Narnum Renegade, Aether Herder, and Aether Stream Leopard. Druid of the Cowl is just a reasonable ramp creature. They don't print one mana ramp creatures anymore, so this is what we work with. Narnum Renegade is very fair without the Renegade trigger, and the Renegade trigger is just pure gravy with it. The Aether Herder is energy production and servos, it's very reasonable, and Aether Stream Leopard actually beats down very hard, and its activation cost is critically just one, so it's actually quite cheap. Our next four creatures are Lifecraft Cavalry, Malfist Revolutionary, Ridge Scale Tusker, and a Silk Weaver Elite. Now, Lifecraft Cavalry is very big with Revolt and crucially has that trample so that you can beat down. Malfist Revolutionary is the plus one plus one counter king and beats down as well. Now what you're going to want to put that Malfist Revolutionary with is a Ridge Scale Tusker, which is really good at the mana cost, 5-5 five, five for 5, it doesn't get more fair, and it makes all your other creatures bigger, which is fantastic. Silk Weaver Elite is that critical green reach against those flyers, which can be very annoying for green, and it has the possibility of an extra card just for free, which is fantastic. Next up is Unbridled Growth, which on the surface doesn't look that exciting, but I want to point out that it is great for three color strategies or more, of course, because it allows you to create any of those colors once you got green. And you can cash it in late for an extra card by doing the sacrifice. Now the important thing that I think a lot of people are going to miss is that that allows you to get those revolt triggers because your stuff is going to the graveyard, it's leaving the battlefield. And so when Unbridled Growth goes to the graveyard and gives you your card back, you also get a revolt trigger for any revolt creatures that you might have. Next up is High Spire Infusion, which is just one of those green combat tricks. It's completely reasonable for its mana cost, and it's got that energy upside, which is sweet, because you always have a way to spend it, it seems, in this format. We get two removal spells. We've got Prey Upon and Monstrous Onslaught. Now, Prey Upon in the old Zendikar stuff was not that great because there were a lot of high power, low toughness stuff, so you tend to lose your creature a lot. The green stuff in this set is just big on average, and so you should be able to Prey Upon and just kill their creature and not lose yours, which makes it fantastic. Monstrous Onslaught is, it requires that you have a decent creature out, at least decent, but with those big creatures, it will completely obliterate their board state. So the upside is really high on this one. Next, we're going to talk about gold cards. Now, what I'll say with the gold cards is they are all strong. <laughs> None of the gold cards make me think, oh, I wouldn't want this if I was in those colors. So these make for very easy decisions for you. If you are in these colors or you think that you're going to want to be in those colors, then just play whatever gold cards you open in those colors. They're all very strong. I'll name them out very quickly. Hidden Stockpile, Maverick Thopterist, Outland Boar, Renegade Rallier, Renegade Wheelsmith, Rogue Refiner, Spire Patrol, Tezzeret's Touch, Weldfast Engineer, and Winding Constrictor. 
Now let's go over artifacts next. The first one that I want to talk about is Night Market Guard. Now it's a kind of a good last creature to throw in your deck when you're kind of running out. It count the thing that I like about it is, is that it counts as an artifact, which is more important than ever in this set. But it is much more of a defensive card due to the toughness and its ability to block two creatures. That is why you want to put it in some defensive decks, but I could see it being thrown in some offensive decks that just need a little bit more artifact synergy and another creature to bash face with. Now there are two vehicles that I want to talk about in this set, and they are Untethered Express and Daredevil Dragster. Now I went a bit crazy with vehicles in my last review, and I really liked them. Now these two are really the cream of the crop. Untethered Express will end games unless it's answered. As I said before, I love that kind of effect. Any card that says answer this or die, I love a lot. Daredevil Dragster is a lot like Renegade Freighter, except it also has the possible upside of drawing you cards, but it has to live through two combat phases. Remember though that blocking does count for this. Now Pacification Array and Renegade Map are two cards that you're going to want to play if you're one of those people that says, I am going to play just the most amazing stuff. I'm going to have a decent amount of colors and I'm going to drag out the game forever and then win with my overwhelming power. Now Pacification Array and Renegade Map will help you do that. Pacification Array will of course help you tap down some stuff, it'll make stuff go pretty slow for you, whereas Renegade Map is great in slow multicolored strategies because it can be used to improvise early on to get out maybe some fat blockers if you like, and later on in the game you can always cash it in, you can sacrifice it for whatever effects, or you can use it early on in order to just grab one of those basics that you need for your ridiculous multicolored shenanigans. Lastly, I want to mention Treasure Keeper, because this card goes in every single deck. This is the easiest thing I can say to you. If you open Treasure Keeper, you just put it in your deck, because it's guaranteed to get you another card after it dies. It's already a reasonable size as it is. It's just one of those cards where there's no reason not to play it. So if you open Treasure Keeper, just slap it in. That's an easy choice. Next, we're going to go over cards that are from the Kaladesh packs that will be in your pool, but I think have improved a lot with the new set. The first card is Servo Exhibition, and this is basically because it gives you the ability to improvise. It allows you to use those servos a lot better than you could in the past. All of the Fabricate cards are way better now because... As you fabricate out those servos, once again, you'll be able to use those for improvise. Improvise is a big deal if you have a few of those in your deck. For the same reason, the Black Puzzle Knot and Prophetic Prism are now way better, because Prophetic Prism, instead of filtering for a mana, just taps for a mana when you're casting an improvised spell. Next, Gear Seeker Serpent. <laughs> And the reason for this is because people are just going to be playing even more artifacts as they work on these synergies. If you can make a synergistic artifact deck, Gear Seeker Serpent is going to be one of the payoffs in that deck. Lastly, in white, we have Acrobatic Maneuver and Aviary Mechanic. Now, the reason why these are so good now is because previously they were great for those Enter the Battlefield effects. They still are. But now we also have Revolt cards in our new packs. So these will allow you to remove permanents from the field, that way you can get those revolt triggers when you want to. Lastly, I'd like to mention two rares, which are Syndicate Trafficker and PMLR, which work amazingly well with implements. This is one of those things where you can just be sacrificing those implements that you only paid one mana for, for example, and then drawing a card and getting a cool effect. Next is the section that I call dumb combos for dumb people. So let's start off with the dumbest one of them, which is Consulate Dreadnought and Aerial Modification. So basically turn one, you play your Consulate Dreadnought and then you put Aerial Modification on it and then you make it a creature permanently so you can ignore that ridiculous crew cost and you just have a gigantic flyer that will end the game so quickly your opponent will wonder what even happened. The next card is Mechanized Production, which is surprisingly good because you have servos. So what you do is, is you attach Mechanized Production in, onto your servos, and then, you know, very quickly you just have a win condition right away because there's all sorts of ways to make servos and you have Fabricate from the old set. The last combo you are extremely unlikely to even open, but you need to open a Sahili Rai and a Felidar Guardian. So if you get this Mythic Planeswalker from the Kaladesh packs, then what you do is, is you minus two it on a Felidar Guardian, you get another Felidar Guardian, which bounces Sahili Rai, which 
then comes in with three loyalty, you minus two it, you get another Felidar Guardian. So you get infinite creatures this way of one fours. So, you know, you win the game. Well, that's it for the GG Degree pre-release guide. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that like. If you'd like to see more content, feel free to hit subscribe. I promise there's some more coming down the pipes. And as always, I'll see you next video.